Good morning everyone. I am Aditya Vasti, Assistant Professor School of Law and Public Policy. Today I am here to discuss about mock trial. My topic for today's session is introduction to mock trial. Now key features or key points I am going to discuss in today's session is about understanding mock trial. Second is importance of mock trial and third is key players in a mock trial. So if you look at this photo what you will find here is there is a judge there is an advocate there is a police official there is a victim and there are public right so this is a normal courtroom photo a general indian courtroom photo now next moving to uh, understanding mock trial so before st- understanding mock trial we are going to discuss about trial so a trial is a search for the truth a trial is an effort to discover what had really happened and is a simulation of the event which took place way back in the past a legal trial is a formal process where parties involved in a dispute present evidence and information before the tribunal or the court the purpose of a trial is to adjudicate claims or disputes in a fair and impartial manner a mock trial as the name implies it is a fictional courtroom where uh, the student practices about the hypothetical case and it is basically a simulation activities for law students for basic understanding of laws investigation and role of authorities so whatever the court do in actual the law students can do that in law schools only and it is a simulation exercise for law students now we are going to discuss about the stages of trial or the stages of mock trial so there are three stages pre trial trial and post trial in pre trial there is commission of offence second is information to police and third is investigation in trial there are f- five things charges prosecution evidence statement of accused defense evidence and verdict and in post trial they have sentencing and appeal moving to major parties in trial so basically there are few major parties in trial first is there must be a victim second there is an accused third there is a witness fourth there is a police officials fifth judici- uh, judiciary or we can say judge next is prosecutor and next is defense counsel these are the major parties in the trial now types of trial in indian legal system so in india we have four types of trials first is session trial second is warrant trial third is summons trial and fourth is summary trial now if we talk about session trial so if the offence committed is punishable with more than 7 years or imprisonment of life or death the trial is to be conducted in session court after being committed or forwarded to the court by the magistrate now in warrant trial warrant trial case includes offence punishable with the death penalty or lifetime imprisonment exceeding 2 years a trial in a warrant case begin either by filing an fir in the police station or by filing with the magistrate now moving further to summon trial if the offence committed is punishable with less than 2 years of imprisonment then it is known as summon case in respect of this offence it is not necessary to frame the charges the summon is issued by magistrate to accused under section 13 and section 204 clause 1a of crpc now last is summary trial this category includes cases that uh, for the most part only requires a handful of hearing to resolve the matter these type of trials are reserved for minor infractions in order to reduce the burden on the court and to save money and time moving further to procedure for session trial so session trial is mentioned under section 225 of crpc section 225 of crpc says that the case of prosecution shall be conducted by public prosecutor where the trial is before the session court now moving further to section 226 it requires the public prosecutor to open up his case by describing the charges against the accused with evidence through which the prosecution will prove the accused guilty next is section 227 it empowers the judge to discharge an accused if after consideration of the documents and records submitted against the accused and after hearing prosecution and accused the judge finds that there are no sufficient grounds to proceed against the accused in this case there is an acquittal for the accused 
if there are no grounds for the conviction moving further for procedure for session trial section 229 of crpc says that an accused may plead guilty before court and upon such pleadings the court on his own may convict the accused where the accused does not plead guilty the court is required to fix a date for the examination of the witness and the court shall take the evidence which may be produced by the prosecution on such date a witness will be examined orally now moving further to section 231 clause 2 of crpc it says that the cross examination of any witness and may also recall any witness for further cross examination next next is section 232 of crpc an accused can be acquitted in the court after hearing both the parties and considering all the evidences considers that there is no single evidence which a court after hearing the argument shall pronounce the judgment under section 235 of crpc an accused may either be convicted or acquitted next is procedure for warrant trial section 207 of crpc says that on institution of any warrant case the accused must be provided with a copy of the police report and other document when the accused appears or in brought before magistrate at the start of the trial now next is framing of the charges section 240 of crpc says that if the magistrate is of the opinion that there is some grounds to believe that accused has committed certain offense and is competent to try such offense then in his opinion he may sufficiently punish the accused then the charges will be framed against the accused in writing and the trial will begin next is statement of the accused section 313 of crpc says that uh, an accused is examined to explain the circumstances appearing in the evidence of the case against him during the examining of the accused the question and answers which is given by the accused is recorded moving further to section 243 of crpc so here the it talks about prosecution witness so the defense witness are produced by the accused the expenses on coercing the appearance of the witness shall be borne by the accused now moving further for summon trials so it is very simple the summon is issued by the magistrate to accused under section 204 clause 1a of criminal procedure code the procedure to deal with such matter is described in section 251 to 259 of crpc which is not as serious like other trials so summon trial is basically for small offenses now section 262 of crpc talks about summary trials and it, it emphasizes the procedure to be followed under summary trial and it is very similar to summon trial if the penalty is less than 200 rupees no chance of appeal will be given so summary trial and summon trial are very much similar and they both are for small offenses petty offenses now we are going to discuss about importance of mock trial so it provides invaluable experience and insights into the criminal justice system and the complexities of legal proceedings it allows participants to hone their public speaking critical thinking and problem solving skills while developing a better understanding of law third is mock trial competition are a great way to learn how to effectively work with team in a team setting as well as to develop essential communication and presentation skills next is participating in a mock trial is an excellent opportunity to build relationships with other professionals and expand one's network now key players in mock trial so there must be a victim accused witness police officials judge prosecutor and defense counsel these are the key players of the mock trial now we are going to discuss about the trial procedure so first there is an opening of the court when the judge is enter everyone in the court should stand and remain still until the judge tells everyone to be seated the judge shall call the court to order and will announce the case by the name of the parties and shall ask the advocates to approach the bench next is prosecution opening statement should briefly tell judge of the nature of the facts and the advocate should briefly outline the facts and circumstances that brought the case to the court the advocate should tell the court that he is calling which witness and summarize the key facts of 
the case now he should also identify the importance of any document that will be introduced during testimony the advocate should conclude with the remedy or request for belief they see basically they have to conclude with a prayer next turn is of the defendant so the purpose of defendant's opening statement is to deny that the prosecution and to brief the facts from the point of view of the defendant so the defense advocate should then tell the court the general theory of the client's defense and discuss the facts that weaken the plaintiff's or prosecution's case the advocate should outline what and what the witness has uh, testified and they have to cross examination the witness next is calling witness and direct examination as the name suggests the witness are summoned for direct examination and here the advocate ask the question to the witnesses whether the act uh, they have seen is proper or not whether they have seen whether they have testified that or not now next is cross examination each direct examination is followed by a cross examination during cross examination the advocate for the opposing party ask question to the witness and here the defendant uh, basically the defendant counsel ask the question to the witness of the plaintiff party and tries to discredit those witnesses next is closing arguments in closing argument the advocate should summarize the highlights of the witness witness testimony and document as they support about his or her client's case and should use those facts to understand the opponent's case during the close argue uh, during the closing arguments the advocate should try to establish a link between the facts of the case and facts of the law so this is the basic trial procedure that we follow in our country thank you so much for listening to this session